I got coffee. What type of show? All right, let's adjust this a little bit. Move this a little closer. Got to fidget. You always got to fidget with these things, you know. Get them out. There we go. There we go. What do you think? What do you think? No facial hair. Well, virtually none. Three, two. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Today is Thursday. It is May 27th, 2021. My name is Jeremy, and this is my first cup of coffee. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. Well, I hope you had a good Wednesday. I, as you can see, got frustrated with my beard. I couldn't get it even, it was ticking me off, my chin was itching, and I just went, screw it. I just, I just clipped the whole thing off. And so we'll let it grow back a little bit. Oh, a little red down there. Yeah, you know, this is the challenge of having a beard. You don't see what your skin looks like. Once in a while I have to do this and make sure that the skin's okay. And you know, Having a beard's hard work. When You've ever seen those beard competitions where, where guys have like crazy long beards and they do funky things with them? I did not realize until probably just a couple of years ago that that was a factor of more than just not shaving. It takes a lot of work to maintain a beard and the skin underneath. It uh, can be brutal. And the more hair you have, the harder it is to you know scrub in there. Coffee's tasting good. I've got my summer robe on. Maybe pushed in a little bit. It's 55 out, but that's okay. Uh, it's still warm in here. Yesterday got hot. Ooh, was it toasty in here? Um, we got up to in the shade. I think it was 87. It was definitely in the 90s in the backyard. And we had windstorms that were blowing trees over. Some of my, my potted plants on the front porch fell over twice. I had to rig them up and increasingly sturdy ways and we had thunderstorms and rain and heavy heavy rain so as far as i can tell all the plants in the gardens are fine and we should see a lot of growth come in the next week because the ground's finally wet we needed that it wasn't dry but now it's really it's it is ready to support life Well, a couple cool things going on. Uh, one, the audio version of the novel Faith is back, and I went to upload it yesterday to Audible, and I, and Audible said, hey, you can't do this book, because in order to do an audiobook, you have to correlate it to the appropriate written book. And Amazon, and they said, yeah, that book, you can't do that book. And so I wrote to them to say, why? And, you know, I'm expecting an answer today. So we'll figure that out because, oh, that would be a pain. That would be sad. It would be very sad. And uh, what else? What else happened yesterday? I got my snow tires off my car. I went to the gym. I did a whole bunch of social media for a whole bunch of clients, including Whistle Kick. I'm getting more involved in the social media. Uh, we're, we've got some good stuff going on. I used to all sit on Andrea's shoulders and she had to step away for a few weeks. There's some family stuff going on for her. And so another person on the team, Sheila, stepped up. She said, yeah, I'll, I'll work on it. And instead of it being all her, we're collaborating. And the new system that we use, the new software that we, we're using that I'm paying $150 a month for. Uh, uh, isn't that an attractive face? Uh, that $150 a month does make it really easy for us to manage that, the social media for clients and clients can approve. And it's, it's, it's great, it's handy. And because of that, we're coming up with better and better stuff. It allows me to, to do the part that I'm good at, it allows her to do the part that she's good at, clients get to contribute things. Everybody wins. Stacy says that could have been a screenshot phase. I can't learn it. Um, and probably the highlight of my day yesterday. I was out watering the plants because, you know, I knew it was going to rain, but I wasn't sure how much. So I wanted to make sure I watered everything. 
and there aren't a lot of people who live on my road, but enough that I don't know everyone yet. And this older woman was walking a dog. And the moment the dog saw me, the dog was like, oh, I want to be your friend. So I asked her, I said, can I pet your dog? She said, yeah. Um, the dog's name was Jake. Jake was probably a cross between a pit bull and a lab and maybe some kind of terrier. And it almost looked like the markings reminded me of like a the way a little kid would draw a Dalmatian. Jake was white with weird black spots that did not match at all and was just the sweetest dog. Oh, what a sweetheart. Good morning, Brian. I probably could have spent, I don't know, I could have spent hours playing with that dog, but after about 10, 15 minutes and we talked about gardening and how she got the dog, you know, she resumed her walk. I went back to finishing up with the plants and he was a good boy. Andrew and I had a really good call yesterday talking about the podcast, a bunch of things that we're implementing bunch of things that are going on behind the scenes, things we're looking to do to improve, not just the experience for the listener or the viewer as we start to add more and more video, but the experience for the guest. We've had a lot of guests on. We have had, I mean, just roughly, uh, what do we have? So if Monday was 608, 304, plus another... 19, 20, let's call it 19. Three, about 300, we've interviewed, I've interviewed roughly 325 people. That's a lot of people. And so if we can make that experience more valuable to them, if we can give them bonus stuff, and, and you'll start to see what that stuff looks like. Some of it involves social media, some of it involves other things. And I'm checking on something because there's something that I think is out that I think you are going, I'm, I'm super excited to talk about. You're offline. No, I'm not, YouTube or this tablet. Come on. Try harder. There we go. Okay. Hold on, let me find the video one. One of these should be a video one. Here it is. Okay. All right. So I got to press pause. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Ah, oh, that's why. Publish now. Public. Done. 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 Okay, episode 609 is out. Now, if you're watching me, I'm guessing that you can't look at it. So, here's what we did. We, Andrew and I, came up with this idea. And so here's what today's episode is titled, episode 609. How to fight Jeff Speakman as Jeff Sanders in The Perfect Woman. So this is hopefully going to become a recurring series, like a, like a monthly thing. And I definitely want your feedback, your input, your suggestions on movies, etc. So Andrew and I grabbed Gabe. And if you were a fan of Whistlekick Live, you know Gabe. Gabe was the producer, director, everything on that show. And we grabbed Gabe and said, hey, let's do this. So what did we do? We all watched, or rewatched. I hadn't seen it, The Perfect Weapon. Took some notes. And then the three of us sat down and recorded for a half hour. And talked about how we would fight, not Jeff Speakman, but Jeff Speakman's character, Jeff Sanders. If we had to fight him, how would we fight him based on what happened in the movie? 
Stacy says, Gabe is awesome. Yes, he is. And it was a ton of fun. And we're going to do it again. And it's unclear. We're, we're, you know, we'll have, we'll bring other people on to do these shows with us. But it was a good time. And we cut in like little segments of the movie to show you what we're talking about. And Julius did an awesome job on the editing. I really want to give a shout out to Julius. He killed it. He does such a great job. Pretty much anything that I, I want to do, it's like anything to do with audio video, video stuff. Hey, Julius, can we do this? Yep. What about this? Yep. Can we do this? Yep. Our stunt double stand-ins allowed. <laughs> nice, Brian. And so Julius took this, this idea, took the recording, and then I gave him at this timestamp in, in the recording, I want you to put in a few seconds from this timestamp in the movie, and I think you're really going to enjoy this. Now, why did we do this? We did this for a couple reasons. One, it was fun, and I'm not aware of anybody else doing this. There's plenty of stuff out there that is, is you know, inflammatory and derogatory and takes shots at martial arts actors. And, but this felt more like a, a celebration of the movie, and it's positive, but it's analytical, and it's, there's a bit of, we, we had some disagreement on certain things. And I think even with all that, you may find some benefit to your own martial arts training. You might find that the analytical process that we go through is helpful to you. How do you approach combat self-defense? If you were to watch a martial arts movie, how would you fight that character or that character? Those exercises are, maybe they're, they're not the best thing to do to get better, but they are relevant and helpful. So I hope you check it out, episode 609. It's out today. There is a video version. There's an audio version in your podcast feed. Video version, of course, is here on YouTube. And I hope you give us some feedback because that's what we really need. Whenever we do a new thing, we want feedback. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What did you like about it? What didn't you like? How do we make it better? That's what we want to know. Ah, coffee is so good. Uh, just a heads up because I'm, I'm going to try to remember to say it a couple times. Uh, the week of, what is that, the 6th? Third, I think it's the 6th. The 6th through 7, 8, 10. 11? 7 through 11. Anyway, that week. That's my birthday week. I am probably not doing First Cup that week. Uh, because I think I want to try to sleep. Well, the cat's not going to let me sleep in. But... I don't know. I, I'm playing with that idea. I, I think I've mentioned it before. Uh, and I received something in the mail. And I was 99% sure who sent it. So I sent an email. I said, did you send me something? And he said, yes. So uh, Frank sent me this. Or rather, Frank had this made for me. Uh, and, and there's some other aspects to why this is a super cool gift that um, are between Frank and I. But it's a quote that I read on the show. Stacy says, feed the cat, go back to bed. Uh, you must understand how the cat works. That's not how the cat works. But this is a quote that I read on the show that I, I expressed that I really liked, that I, I do. And so let me read it again. May the stars carry your sadness away. May the flowers fill your heart with beauty. May hope forever wipe away your tears. And above all, may silence make you strong. Chief Dan George. And so, I gotta figure out a great spot to hang this. This is getting hung up. This, this has to go somewhere that I'm gonna see it often because it's super cool. So again, thank you, Frank. You know, how lucky am I that the team, the whistle kick team, the sheer number of people who volunteer their time, People that I am fortunate enough that I get to call friends that are along this journey with me, helping us. They are part of the us and they're helping on this mission to benefit the martial arts. And they're great people. I'm really lucky. Ah. 
Brian says, on your ceiling above your bed. You see it every morning. I don't know that, I mean, I could. I'd have to, the retention on that would be a little interesting. Uh, here's a funny story that I was in the, in the, the apartment for. And I'm going to try to tell this delicately because it's what I always think of when things fall in. My college, one of my college roommates, somebody I lived with, oh, Stacy, you're too kind. Somebody I lived with for a year and a half. After college, moved in with my then best friend. And my then best friend had his girlfriend over. And as a result of that, a plaque similar to this fell off the wall of my roommate's wall and landed on his head. It was not the first time I was told. I think that's a funny story. Hopefully you can fill in the gaps. Now let's see what you guys gave me to talk about today. Good stuff, I'm sure. Burr, burr, burr. Burr, burr. Did you guys like outside yesterday? The bugs got me. Frank says the deck looks great. There's one board that if the weather conditions are right, have popped, it, it's popped up, I gotta screw it down. But most of the time it's down, so I can't tell which one it is. Because it, it literally snapped the deck screws. Uh, but it's been, I'll tell you, nothing I have done to this place has changed the way I use my home more than that patio door and the 12 by 12 deck outside. I, I can't believe I waited so long to do it. I wish I'd done it the first year I was here. Stacy threw up an emoji that suggests she understands what I was referencing. And we've got some stuff here from Frank, from some more Medal of Honor recipients. And remember, if you have stuff you want me to talk about, drop it in the comment section below after the show closure. Number one. A man's integrity is his greatest asset. Without it, he has nothing. Louis R. Rocco, Army, Vietnam War. Integrity is something I find myself coming back to more and more as time goes on. There are opportunities. I'll use air quotes. Opportunities that I've had. There are things that I could do to benefit myself, to make money, to whatever. And I'm finding that as we seemingly devolve socially, culturally, that it feels even more important to maintain my integrity. I have never been someone that everyone likes. I, I am not an uh, overly charismatic person. I do not attract, I've never been someone who attracts, you know, tons of friends. That actually feels like it's changing, but that, that's a whole separate conversation. But what do I have? My, my word has been above board. I have always honored my obligations. And I've worked really, really hard to be honest with people. I would say that there are no modern era time. You know, when you're a kid, you do dumb stuff. But over the last, let's say, decade, I've been a pretty darn good person. And as I get older, I find more and more ways to do that. I've found ways to say no to things that maybe I wanted to do, but I knew were wrong. And I think that that integrity, that code, that budo, whatever you want to call it, I think is so critical. How many of us actually sit down and say, you know, this is what I stand for. I'm going to do this. I'm not going to do that and honor it. Here's a good example. Probably the least personal example I can share, which is why I'm gonna share it. This has been a difficult year. 
it really doesn't have a lot to do with integrity other than being honest with myself. I've had some difficult personal things, uh, not the least of which was my father passing. And I started drinking a lot. More than I was comfortable with. And I was fe feeling challenged with that. But for the last two years, and now this year, for a month before my birthday, I have not had any alcohol. And so, cold turkey, I just stopped drinking. I haven't had a drink in today's three weeks. Now I'll probably have a few drinks on my birthday. But it's a reset. Now, why is that relevant to integrity? Because I promised myself I wouldn't. I am not going to drink for a month. There have been plenty of days I've wanted to. There have been rough days, especially early on. You know, like anything, your body adapts to what you give it. My body still craves alcohol. Hey, give us that tasty sugar stuff. But I promised myself I wouldn't, and I'm holding to that promise. If I promise someone I'm going to do something, I do it. If I give a client a deadline, which I very rarely do, I don't care how late I have to stay up to make that deadline happen. I will get it done. Integrity. I've heard integrity defined as doing the right thing even when no one's watching. There is no greater honor than the opportunity to serve and help preserve our freedom. It's the essence of humanity. James E. Livingston, Marine Corps, Vietnam War. Marine Corps. There we go. Uh, the service part. I think applies to all of us. There is no greater honor than the opportunity to serve. And as martial artists, it's something I think most of us understand, especially if, if you've had the opportunity to teach, whether it's, you know, one class, you helped someone remember a form, or you've had a school for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. Teaching, sharing martial arts. I mean, there, there is a tremendous honor and service in that. And it's something that we don't talk about enough. We as an industry often get wrapped around the axle on what's best or right or, and all these other things. But there are quiet instructors who have been doing it for decades and sharing their love of martial arts with others. And some of those people go on to train elsewhere or move away or some of them just stop training but in so many cases, those instructors had a positive influence on their lives that they may not even realize. They served. They gave back in the way that their instructor gave to them. I've actually considered, and it, the timing is not right because just my, my life doesn't make sense for this, but I'm feeling the itch to teach. I'm feeling the itch to possibly have a school. I love teaching. It's one of my favorite things to teach people martial arts. But as you know, I don't do anything kind of half-assed. So where would the time for that come from? I don't know. That's why I'm not doing it. Because if I'm going to teach martial arts, I'm going to crush it. Unfortunately, I have a friend 20 minutes that way with a school and a friend who teaches as close as 15 minutes that way. So that's another reason. I don't want... This is a per capita, we've got a lot of martial arts in my area. <sighs> Although I teach things they don't. Very different. And our last quote for the day. And I really hope that you will watch the episode of Martial Arts Radio that we put out today. Please check it out. Let, let me know. I'm, I, am, I am asking of you, my First Cup audience, to give me some feedback. You guys know me better just because of the sheer volume of time that we spend together, uh, I think, than, than most of the audience. So if you can check that out, let me know. That'd be cool.
So here's our last quote. And then I need some stuff for me for tomorrow. When something needs to be done, push ahead and overcome all obstacles. There is always a way. Stacy says, look at the mobile dojo concept that Lisa McGuire is doing. Super cool concept. Stacy, do you know the, the relationship between Lisa and I? Do you, you know that she bought the school I started at? In the town I grew up in? That's where I did my black belt test. That's where I learned. So now I'm all distracted. When something needs to be done, push ahead and overcome all obstacles. There is always a way. It's one of my favorite sayings. Um, here's a great, great thing that I can share on that front. There is always a way, right? And that's, I mean, we could, ha, Stacy says, no, I did not. That's funny. Uh, Lisa's been on the show twice. Lisa's been on the show twice. Um, I have, I have a lot of respect for Lisa and what she's done and doing. I'm, I'm not up to speed on what she's doing now. We've kind of lost touch. Um, politics of martial arts. We'll just leave it at that. But I, I still think very highly of her. So when I go to the gym, and I talk about going to the gym and lifting weights, you know, because I'm not formally training in martial arts under anybody right now, which, you know, uh, looking for opportunities to change that. Vermont's regulations are changing again, so maybe we can finally start doing this again. There are a number of teenagers that come in, and they've seen me long enough now that they ask me questions and they listen to me when I give them feedback. And one of the things that happens from a lot of people in the gym of various ages is, oh, I can't do this, but you know, my knees don't do it. All, all these like, excuses. And so one of the things I'll tell them, there's always a way. Are you willing to put in the work? Are you willing to put in the work to rehabilitate your knees? Well, you don't understand. At 22, they wanted to replace both of my knees. I understand. My shoulder, okay. What about, right? There's always a way. Doesn't matter what the goal is, there is a way. Now, you may not be willing to make the sacrifice to get there, but there is a way. If you said, Jeremy, I need a million dollars tomorrow. I don't have a legal way of getting that for you, but if it was a matter of life or death, I could draw you out a plan to get that. A lot of us work from a place of restriction, barriers, boundaries. And the vast majority of those boundaries either don't exist or we put them there. Who could you be? What could you do? If we start to think in terms of opportunity, possibility, options, they're virtually limitless. It's never too late. This, this is where uh, Gary Vee, Gary Vaynerchuk, and I are in lockstep. There's always an opportunity to do more, do better, do something. But most of us don't want to take that chance. We don't want to take that risk. We don't want to make that jump, that leap. We are afraid of failing. Here's the last thought. If you dig into the world of startups and entrepreneurship, which I'm going to guess some of you are familiar with, maybe not all of you. If you look at a lot of these founders who end up as you know, very rich people, you will see horrendous failure leading up to their success quite often. Here's a great example from something going on right now. Bumble, the dating app, had its IPO, its initial public offering, meaning it's now traded on the stock market. And the founder, a woman, is now incredibly wealthy, billionaire, overnight, not overnight, but from, from that IPO. Do you know where she started? Tinder. And if you look at the story, which in fact, you're not going to get all the details because there are still lawsuits. She was forced out and treated horribly. To the point where 
nobody wanted, almost nobody wanted to work with her. She had an idea on making dating apps better and nobody wanted to work with her. She finally found somebody. You could easily consider her time at Tinder a failure, but she found a way and she moved forward and she saw success. And that is usually what happens. If you want to succeed, you probably have to fail first. If you want to do a great form, you're going to screw it up a bunch of times before you get there. If you want to land a difficult technique, you know, some jump spinning something, you're probably going to fall on your butt a few times. Nothing worth having comes easy, but there's always a way. I hope you have a great day. I will see you back here tomorrow, bright and early, for First Come. Take care, everyone.